Hello, welcome to the second Ethics in Animals video. The first video was about Peter Singer's Animal Liberation book and gave a brief overview of um, some of the main themes and arguments from that book. And this short video will cover Tom Reagan's um, 1983 book, The Case for Animal Rights. So um, Reagan's main argument is this. Um, his conclusion is that many animals have basic moral rights. Uh, why does he think this? Well, premise one, human beings have basic moral rights. Uh, what sort of rights? Rights to life, rights to their bodies, rights to liberty, in general, rights to respectful treatment. He then argues that if human beings have these basic moral rights, then many animals have these basic moral rights also. So he begins with human rights. Um, and concludes with animal rights. So we want to understand his reasoning. So uh, what are moral rights? Well, moral rights or natural rights are distinct from legal rights. Um, legal rights are um, you know, created by a legal system. They are made by people. They come and go. They change. Um, moral rights, however, aren't like that, or the common concept of moral rights is not like that. They are natural, they are inherent, they are not created, they can't be destroyed, they are, um, um, well, that's what they're like. So uh, there's two broad types of moral rights. Uh, there are negative rights and positive rights. And a negative right is a right to not be harmed, a right to not be treated disrespectfully, uh, treated um, badly. Positive rights are rights to benefits and assistance. And um, so a right to health care would be, say, like a positive right. You know, somebody is obligated to help you or somebody is obligated, um, the government is obligated to pay for your help if you need medical attention. Um, Reagan's focus is on negative rights. Um, the reason for this is uh, people tend to think negative rights are more important than positive rights. Um, you know, it's more important to not be harmed than to be helped. Um, and um, since he argues that animals' negative rights are very often violated, are very much often violated, that's the focus. So, um, and his picture of rights is, if you have rights, it's like you have a no trespassing sign on you. Um, it's, it's like this, you have this no trespassing sign that would make harming you wrong. Um, so that's kind of his basic idea about what a right is. So um, to explain more about what rights are, um, we could imagine a situation like this. Uh, this is a common um, situation give, uh, case given against the moral theory utilitarianism. So um, imagine you're in a doctor's office getting just a physical and you're fine. But there's five celebrities in another area of the hospital that need organs, and they're not being, the doctors can't find organs for these celebrities, and they're about to die. And they notice that your organs would um, work perfectly. So it occurs to them that, you know, they could kill you in secret and take your organs and save those celebrities. And the thought is, if you do the math, well, you know, five is more than one, and these are five celebrities who have millions or billions of fans. And if you're looking to do the greater good, like produce the greatest overall happiness, as utilitarians want to do, it seems like what we should do is kill you and take your organs and use them to save these celebrities. So um, if your reaction to this is, no, I think it'd be wrong to kill me, to save those celebrities. Um, you know, I don't agree to this. I don't want to do this. I shouldn't be used for the benefit of those celebrities. If you think that, you might be fond of the idea of rights. And many people are fond of the idea of rights. Reagan was fond of the idea of rights. So again, this is kind of the basic idea about what rights are. They're like a no trespassing sign, and they're no trespassing, even if trespassing on you would produce the greater overall good or greater overall happiness. So, um, again, Reagan thinks that we human beings have uh, moral rights, such as the right to life, the right to our body, 
you know, if somebody were to steal some of our body parts or try to steal some of our body parts, um, they would be violating our rights. We have the right to liberty. You know, if somebody wrongfully imprisons us, kidnaps us, that violates our rights. Um, in general, the rights to respectful treatment. So Reagan thinks we have these rights. Um, do we have these rights? Many people will say yes. They will confidently say yes, we do have such rights. Well, the question is, um, or the philosophical question is, well, why? Why do we have these rights? What makes us have these rights? And um, people often don't really think about this, um, in part because there's often just sort of no real practical need to do it. Um, but uh, this is what philosophers do. Um, and uh, Reagan believes that we have rights. So the question is why? Um, in his books, he in his book he reviews a number of explanations for why we have rights and finds them all um, inadequate in various ways. So uh, one answer is um, um, we have rights. Human beings have rights because they're human. Um, Reagan responds, "Well, yeah, we, we know that we're human. You know, we know we're human beings. The question, though, is why do human beings have rights?" So saying that, you know, human beings have rights because they're human beings, that is not a uh, very informative answer. Um, next answer, people sometimes say, well, human beings have rights because they're rational. Our being rational is what gives us rights. Uh, Reagan's response to this is, well, you know, is this really why we have, say, the right to, say, not be tortured or right to not be imprisoned? Um, because we're rational in the sense that, um, you know, we can do math problems or uh, think fancy thoughts. He wonders if that's really the best explanation here. Um, the bigger concern, though, would be like, well, what about babies? What about mentally challenged human beings? Um, it doesn't seem like they're particularly rational in the way that rationality is often understood by people who give this objection or propose this theory. Um, you know, they're not doing math problems. Babies aren't doing math problems. Um, you know, they're not doing physics problems or anything like that. So um, Reagan thinks this explanation seems to leave out um, a lot of human beings who um, aren't particularly rational, but yet it seems like they have rights. Um, they are not mere things to be used for others' benefits. Um, another related explanation is that, well, human beings have rights because we can make free choices. Again, the question is, uh, you know, if somebody's going to violate your rights, is that really, do, do you really have those rights because you can make free choices? Is that, is that it? Well, Reagan thinks that's kind of abstract in various ways. And again, more importantly, um, it seems like there are many human beings uh, who, uh, you know, perhaps cannot make free choices. Um, again, various human beings like babies, mentally challenged human beings, um, other, hum other people like that. So um, he again thinks this is an inadequate explanation, and it seems to leave out um, many human beings who uh, many people would think have rights. Uh, final proposal, some might say like, well, human beings have rights because God gives them rights. And uh, Reagan responds to this, that this is, would be a pretty controversial sort of explanation here. Um, and we can skip past some of the controversies by observing that, well, if God were to give us rights, presumably there would be something about us that would make us, uh, that would make God give us those rights. So the question is, what would that be? So we have these, this question, why do human beings have rights? Here are some common answers. Uh, Reagan reviews them and proposes these are not argues these aren't very good answers. So what's his answer? Reagan proposes that we have rights because we are what he calls subjects of lives. Each of us is a subject of a life. And this is a term that he came up with, um, mostly because at the time there was sort of no better way to express his proposal. So let me read a little quote. Reagan writes, we are each of us, we are each of us the experiencing subject of a life, a conscious creature 
having an individual welfare that has importance to us, whatever our usefulness to others. We want and prefer things, believe and feel things, recall and expect things, and all of these dimensions of our life, including our pleasure and pain, our enjoyment and suffering, our satisfaction and frustration, our continued existence or our untimely death, all makes a difference to the quality of our life as lived, as experienced by us as individuals. So why do we have the right to life? Why do we have the right to our bodies? Reagan's proposal is it's because we are a subject of a life. We have a perspective on the world. Things can go better and worse for us from our point of view. And so rights basically protect that. So how does this relate to animals? Well, let me keep continuing with the quote. And here we have it in this yellow part. And the same is true of those animals that concern us, the ones that are eaten and trapped, for example. They too must be viewed as the experiencing subjects of a life with inherent value of their own. So basically, Reagan argues that, well, look, uh, we have rights because we can feel pleasure and pain, enjoyment and suffering, satisfaction and frustration, all that. We are subjects of a life, lives, and so are many animals also. So since we have rights because we are subjects of lives, and many animals seem to be subjects of lives also, they too would have basic rights. Um, rights to their lives, rights to their bodies, uh, rights to um, you know some kind of autonomy. Um, basically, rights to be treated respectfully, treated not as a mere thing to be used for others. So back to the main argument. Uh, again, Reagan says humans have basic moral rights. Why is that? Well, because we humans are subjects of lives. Well, next premise, if human beings have basic moral rights, then many animals have basic moral rights also. Why would you think this? Well, Reagan proposes because us and many animals are similar. And we are similar in the ways that makes us have rights. We are both subjects of lives. So, uh, you know, he begins somewhere that he and many of us are confident in, that we have rights, that human beings have basic moral rights. He asks, why is that? What's the best explanation? What's the ultimate reason? And he notices that that explanation um, applies to many animals. So, of course, there are many objections. Um, you know, all controversial views has, have objections. And let me just run a few of, through a few. Some might respond that, well, Reagan is just wrong in thinking that anybody has rights. Um, nobody has rights. Humans don't have rights. Animals don't have rights. Um, so that would be one way of objecting. Um, insofar as uh, many people believe that humans have rights, at least, um, that probably won't be a very popular objection um, for many people. Next response says that, well, Reagan has an incorrect explanation for why human beings have rights. Um, so, you know, if you really feel, if, if, you, if you figure out why human beings really have rights, uh, the explanation there is just not going to apply anything for any non-humans. So, um, I'm not going to review what this could be. Uh, we could wonder if uh, some of the remarks about the sort of rationality-based explanations and moral choice-making explanations uh, would fit this sort of category. But it's a, you know, it's a good question. What would a better explanation be? What would be a better explanation than the subject of a life explanation? Um, would that explanation be needlessly complex? Um, Reagan argues that is the case. And what will that explanation apply, imply, or suggest for all the human beings who um, we might think uncontroversially have basic rights? So um, this is one sort of skeleton way of responding to Reagan here. A uh, final possibility would be to argue that, well, you know, Reagan is right that we have rights. Reagan is right why we have rights, um, but no animals are subjects of lives. And um, Reagan wrote his book, or his book came out in 1983. And since then, uh, the, the science of understanding the lives, the mental and emotional lives of animals 
has only grown. So um, I, I, I don't know that this is going to work out in terms of being a very